Hey everybody, Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well this weekend. It's been a hectic 48 hours over here, or 24 hours at the very least for this end, because, well, I'm having a little bit of trouble with the internet on my computer in particular, so wasn't able to put up a video yesterday because there's been a lot of changes with that severe weather setup, so we're going to be kind of playing catch up on here. Normally on Sundays, I try to do a weekly forecast or look at the week ahead, whichever one you want to call it, but because of this upcoming severe event i want to try to put a little bit more emphasis on that so that video will actually be coming up early tomorrow afternoon or actually late tomorrow morning even we'll actually be covering the severe setup again for tuesday monday night as well so look forward to that and also you'll see bonus content on the membership channel so if you want hit that join button as well if you aren't already subscribed but that being said let's go ahead and get into things because we're about to look at the setup leading into what's likely going to be a live stream on Tuesday evening. So if you avert your attention to the screen to the right here, it's the slight risk that we've been talking about for the last week. Looks a lot different than when we originally saw it for uh, day seven or day six, actually, for this one. And the interesting thing is the following day where originally we had a very broad slight risk now has been downgraded to a marginal risk at best. So like I said, a lot has been changing with this system. We've been kind of seeing it on the weather models. I would have went into detail about it yesterday, and I actually called that we were going to end up seeing the uh, Wednesday threat be downgraded. Still likely to see some showers and thunderstorms, maybe a small chance of an isolated wind gust, maybe some hail. Tornado kind of leaning towards it not happening, but then again, marginal risk are always like a box of chocolates, as I always say. The Forrest Gump treatment, so to speak. So still be weather aware, but I'm not entirely sure if you will or will not see anything. But it's like, a, or if you were a zombies player from Call of Duty, then it's like hitting a mystery box. You never know. But anyway, though, getting into our day three threat now. We're finally within the 72 hour time frame of this. Chicago, Fort Wayne, Indianapolis, Peoria, Springfield, Illinois st louis and a good chunk of uh, south central and even parts of southeast central missouri are under the gun here and i think all hazards are still possible with this setup i think the tornado threat could be conditional we're going to go ahead and take a look at those models as well but again just before i do that i want to make sure that we know all the areas within this marginal risk still need to be on the lookout as well that includes you detroit milwaukee Columbus, Springfield, Ohio, Cincinnati, you're in there too, Louisville, Evansville, Indiana. All of you guys still need to be watching for severe weather. And I haven't forgotten you too, Jefferson City. That being said, we'll go ahead and go into the models here. And still seeing the tail of two models here, so to speak. The thing with the, the Euro is it's kind of always been hot on this setup, especially uh, with its tornado potential. And we'll get into some of the details there, especially as we get later on into the video. But this trough here is looking, still looking about the same, minus a little bit of change in regards to its evolution. This little broken branch here may be a point of concern as we head into the afternoon into the evening here. I'm thinking towards maybe central Illinois might be the hot spot here, maybe towards a small chunk of maybe eastern. Uh, Missouri here and then eventually we'll watch this progress into Indiana but I'm thinking the threat might be slightly lower here there has been talk amongst some in the weather community that they wouldn't be surprised to see an enhanced risk issue I mean it, it depending on how the morning models look the day before or the day of I think an enhanced risk wouldn't be out of the question but I'm not going to jump on and say that that's exactly what's going to happen here best case scenario it doesn't and then as we go from Tuesday night into Wednesday, this setup really kind of downtrends a bit here. You just don't have that setup isn't really looking as good in regards particularly to the fact that the warm sector is going to be a little further to the south. It's going to be hampered by this trough. So timing and also just the uh, kinematic setup, while there is plenty of wind energy at the mid levels, you're not going to get that kind of lift that you would need to get these storms to really take off here at this point. So large scale ascent basically is kind of working against the storm after this point here. Wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a marginal risk for Wednesday, like I said before. 
it may not even end up becoming that even depending on how things continue to play if things continue to go on his current track but if we go to the gfs we're seeing a little bit of a different look here still thinking the area might be the same but it doesn't quite look as good as far as defluence and confluence i see a little bit better signal from the euro here interesting to see that considering the fact that normally when it comes to severe weather gfs is typically better but we're just going to go with the best signal that we have here gfs still like i said just like with euro on wednesday just things don't really come together well for it the best chance for severe weather would be over here but like i said we're the warm sector is way too far to the south and we kind of lose a lot of that uh, moisture return as well by that point. So major downtrend for Wednesday here. We can uh, take a look at the low level jet as well. And that's going to be a key point of interest in regards to the tornado threat here. If we go with the, oops, I didn't mean to click that. But if we go with the Euro first here, which is what I was trying to do there. You can see that there's a slightly better look as far as the low level jets concerned and you see that surging motion that's coming from the uh almost like a southwesterly direction here that colliding with that motion off to this direction here from the upper levels we already got our directional shear and our speed shear here so indiana illinois line might be a point of interest like i said central illinois is going to probably be a point of interest i think that's going to be a thing more so earlier in the evening if i were to say so myself but as we get later into the evening I'd have no doubt that we are likely to see a few strong storms over here towards Indiana, maybe a little further to the south here towards Kentucky as well. But my main concern right now is going to be those um, mid evening, maybe early uh, night time storms here. And the other thing to make note of here is we're trending more towards a nocturnal threat. So if you happen to live in one of these areas, and you're out here there looking for the storms odds are you may not see it so if there's a warning issued don't try and look for it that's the best thing that you can do at this point so if we go over to gfs if we can get it to work there we go low level jet is not quite as impressive the timing is a little bit earlier though so that's another point of interest like i said central illinois could be the point of interest but this might be trending a little bit more to the north towards indiana here so Still going to have to be monitoring things in regards to the setup as a whole over the course of the next 48 hours leading up to it. So I really thought before that this was going to be a now cast situation and still it looks like it's kind of trending that way. The main things that have not changed, however, are the uh, warm sector and the moisture returns for the most part. The thermodynamics are going to be really good here and this is one part of it and that's the moisture return. And look at how we get a good plume of moisture that pops up right here on that Indiana, Illinois state line here. And then that little moisture tongue that pops up here as well. That's why I think that these two areas in particular pique my interest the most. And while, like I said, not a necessarily a guarantee for tornadoes, these steep lapse rates right here. And while this isn't the best example that I can find right now, just clicking it on the fly because I really meant to click a little bit further over. It's very finite trying to get these soundings right, the click on the right sounding, so to speak. You can see the uh, little loop here between the zero to one kilometer range, which is basically looking at that low level jet we were just talking about. You can see that jump from 10 knots all the way up to 40. If this was a little bit more um, straight into the vertical along that uh, Y axis there, we would be a lot more concerned about a tornado threat here that hence why it's showing marginal but if i look at all the parameters on here which is probably a lot for some of you to look at you can tell that this has a decent severe weather threshold here it's meeting a lot of the parameters that you would be looking for for at the very least a minimal severe setup and it's pretty much going to be prevalent across both models here from euro to gfs and we do eventually lose that moisture return as we get into the overnight hours. But with these storms that are going to be along that front, some uh, damaging wind potential is going to be really high, especially given the gradient that we have here. Right in the moist sector, we're at 52, and then very quickly we drop to 33 degrees on the dew point here. It's always whenever you see that uh, sharp gradient like that is always a point of interest for significant storm development. 
I do think damaging wind threat could be the main threat here, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a few tornadoes, of course. So going into the temperature maps here, we talked about this about a week ago and it hasn't really changed. We have this trough right here, which is resulting in some cold morning temperatures towards the east here. But well, look what happens towards the end of today. Right about at the time we're at right about now, we're seeing these um, warmer temperatures start to take over across the southern plains. And eventually what we end up seeing happening as we go into Monday, that expands further into the Midwest. And by the time D-Day arrives, which would be Tuesday here, you can see even some 80 degree temperatures towards south central parts of Illinois here, also parts of eastern Missouri. And this is why I'm also very concerned about that. And then eventually, of course, that front comes through. This is when our shower and storms will really start to pick up here. And then as we go later into the evening, of course, we lose some of that daytime heating. And then we start to downtrend notably with our setup for Wednesday. Like I said, marginal risk still seems possible. But given the lack of large scale ascent, we're not really going to be seeing a whole lot in the way of severe weather in comparison to what we could see on Tuesday. So as we continue to go forward here, Pretty much seeing the uh, same thing with the GFS. A little bit sharper uh, warm nose here. And this is what also is increasing my concern a little bit. But still a lot of congruence. I'm still thinking things could be variable. Maybe towards central Michigan. This has been kind of flip-flopping back and forth here. But that, that, uh, that warm nose that we're seeing here is pretty stout here. Like I said, if we get that uh, EML to interact properly with that moisture we could have some big problems here and, and based off of what we saw on that skew t with the uh lapse rates i'll go ahead and show that to you again even though like i said this isn't the best example of a tornado sounding what i'm wanting you to pay attention to is this little box right here with these lapse rating lapse rates when you get above a uh, seven that's a pretty steep lapse rate and across the board at all levels of the atmosphere we got some pretty steep lapse rates there so like i said i think all three hazards will end up being possible because of that alone i'm like i said i'm still not entirely sold on the tornado threat 100 percent, but wouldn't surprise me to see them introduce a five percent area for tuesday by tomorrow morning so last things we're going to look at here before we look at the overall picture for the midwest will be the instability here which is represented in cape or joules per kilogram this is already going into the overnight hours monday you can see that instability building do think that there could be a potential for a confluence band to set up over here towards northern Illinois and then eventually as we get later into the day look at how that instability just flares up over here towards this region and like I said this is the main reason why I was concerned about a tornado threat and this is where you start to see the better look for the tornado soundings here and you can even see just a little bit of a cap right here forming at the lower levels with that front coming in it's going to be easy for it to break not the most incredible look as far as the uh, zero to one kilometer setup but as a whole here if we were to just go off of things such as storm relative felicities looking like they're at 186 meters squared per second squared those lapse rates being at an eight which are really steep and then also the dew point being in the 60s temperature and surface temp at the 70s definitely looking like we're on a track here to maybe see a severe setup take shape here if we uh move this uh skew t up a little bit eventually that cap starts to break like we see here this little bit of elevation could come into play to maybe hamper that threat but even so we do get a little bit better loop here if this was like i said if this was a little bit sharper up that y-axis right here and then did that sudden abrupt loop i would be a little bit more concerned with the tornado threat hence why i'm not saying that there's going to be an enhanced risk driven by tornadoes i think it's mainly going to be wind but like i said a lot can happen within 48 hours here so still variable at the very least to say so let's go ahead and look at the nam three kilometer now because we were or looking at the uh, HRRR because this is the NAM 3 kilometer here. It's the first time I've done this with the uh, two screen setup here. But here's an interesting thing to make note of there's that confluence band, likely. And the interesting thing with the uh, HRRR here is we're kind of leaning a little bit more east, further east than I thought here. 
But even so, this is a really uh, aggressive look here with the instability. Maybe towards the Ohio-Indiana line is what we're going to be concerned with in regards to severe threat here. I'm kind of thinking that this is bullish because of the fact that the uh, the uh, rapid ascent, the uh, large-scale ascent here isn't going to really pick up till later in the evening, maybe overnight here. Of course, we're looking at the very edge of this model's uh, time frame here time limit here which is 48 hours but if I look over towards this region huh I'm not sure if I'm uh, buying that right now so I'm kind of limited with H triple R but like I said the uh, it looks like the um, setup here looks a little different I'm, I'm kind of surprised by this I'm not gonna lie this is actually the first time I've actually had a look at the H triple R because obviously we haven't been in range yet but still like I said, large scale uh, instability above a thousand joules per kilogram here definitely favors a severe setup. And most likely we're going to still end up seeing that uh, south west or southeasterly uh, dire uh, direction here from these storms. I'm really confused by that. Hopefully by the uh, OOZ run, we'll be able to get a better look at that later. We'll talk about that more in the day in the uh, next day or so should be whatever that was probably will resolve itself by then i'd like to think but nam three kilometer looks like the more realistic look but of course we can go into range with that so here's what our radar could look like though anyway oh don't want to don't want to zoom in to zoom downward too much so this is getting into the afternoon here and this is, this kind of tells you just how dynamic the storm system is over here towards nebraska we're starting to see some rain and snow develop here and it's interesting to make note of because it could be a multicellular type of mode, but we could maybe get a couple of discrete cells possibly. Like I said, it's still variable, very uh, conditional type severe weather threat. But we do get eventually some strong storms popping up over here as we get into the evening and maybe even the overnight hours right along that frontal boundary. And then eventually we watch that head on out. That's with the Euro and then GFS may not show as impressive of a look but it's also not a high res model like the euro here it's a little bit messier of a storm mode with the gfs in general but eventually as we get into the overnight hours along that frontal boundary i do think that there's still a chance for some shower and storm activity as well and then we'll watch that get on out of here so a lot of uncertainty with the models still even the convective models are kind of all over the place here as you can see so it's gonna like i said it's really gonna boil down to a uh now cast situation where we're really not going to get a good bit of clarity probably till at least tuesday morning if not even later into the afternoon possibly so all we can do is stay tuned all, all you can do is stay tuned i'm gonna keep uh, working on this and trying to get and trying to get this uh setup nailed down here just like the rest of us in the weather community but until then i hope you had a good weekend here i will see you very soon it's been tire metalhead weatherman don't forget to like and leave a comment and i'll see you next time Take care.